Hey you guys, it's been a very long time since I've made one of these, so I thought I'd make another little video to learn some FileMaker. I saw this post on the FileMaker um, forum about a person who's having a problem creating a physical inventory database. Um, I think an inventory database is something really kind of cool and really kind of handy, but there's this little trick that people don't seem to know very well. This person is making, um, is taking physical counts and is making a weekly um, she's, she's basically counting her uh, inventory every week and what she's doing then is copying her FileMaker file uh, every week and saving the file with the week as the name. Now that's not really handy, that's not really the way to have a, an interesting database so let's see if we can find another way to do this. Um, I have um, been um, doing this um, screencast already, I've, I've done this already about seven times and there's always something that's gone wrong so I've already got my file and I'm going to show you a little bit um, what we're going to make. For this exercise I thought about making a little pet shop so what I have is I have animals every animal has some information to it and the cool thing is that we're going to be able to see how many animals that we have well this isn't an animal this happens to be a monster this is a bird so that is an animal we can see how many we have in stock we can have a reorder amount and then in our list we could um, see um, now there is none that need to be ordered but we could in theory see a um, let's see let's make this visible for a second let's see if the reorder amount would be 50 50 here then we can see for instance that this field becomes red and that shows us immediately that our tokens need to be um, need to be ordered I don't have enough of them so basically what I have is sales I have people that come into my store that can uh, purchase things and this is like uh, creating a receipt uh, for them with a the total amount um, so you have a certain amount of uh, our animals that are going out and these are my purchases is basically where I am purchasing animals and adding them to my store so basically what I have is my outgoing uh, inventory and my incoming inventory and I make a calculation um, to come up with our uh, total amount in stock so um, I think I'm going to take you guys through this entire database. It's going to take a, quite a while to make this, but if you follow this exercise, you will have learned a lot about FileMaker. So let's go. All right, so let's go. Let's start. Let's create a new database. Um, I have one here already that I've made, so I'm going to call this one Inventory 2. And then let's get going. Now, uh, for this exercise, what I've got is a, a pet store. So basically, um, I'm going to have animals as my um, as the product that I'm going to be selling. So let's go to File Manage Database, and I immediately have this inventory table that I've gotten from FileMaker, but I don't really want that one. So let's delete it, and let's start with my first my first table animals i'm going to double click this one and if you have seen any of my videos you know that i'll always start with an id field which is a number field set to auto enter a serial number that's uh, because every animal in this case needs its own unique id so let's see what do we need for every animal we need a name um, every animal the name is going to be a text field um, we're going to write, we're going to give them a category, which is a text field, a description, description, should be something like that. This, uh, what else can we do? We could add a picture, which is a container field, and we could have a price. Now, concerning the price, there's probably going to be a purchase price and a sales price. So purchase price is going to be a number and probably when we purchase something we're going to want to make a certain profit, a certain percentage of profit and we can use that percentage to calculate our sales price if you will. So let's say profit uh, is going to be a number and sales price. If this profit is going to be a percentage, then our sales price, instead of being a number, can be a calculation. Let's change that and um, let's create a calculation where the purchase price um, plus the purchase price multiplied by this per percentage of profit will give us our sales price. 
there you go. Uh, I'm not that good with math, but I think this is looking pretty good. Okay, let's hit okay. What do we get? We get absolutely nothing because we uh, still have this inventory layout that we don't need. So let's go to file, manage layouts, and let's um, get rid of this inventory. All right, then what we get is our um, layout where we can start creating a new record. We can insert a picture of our animals and the first one is a bird. Um, category is gonna be birds. Description is going to be this is a little blue bird. And there you go. We can enter a purchase price, let's say 10, and we can enter a profit. Let's say our profit is a percentage, and a percentage we need to write down, let's say if we want to make a 20% profit, then we need to write down not 20, but 0 0.2. And 2% uh, of 10 is apparently 2, so our sales price will be 12. Now a few little things we like to change is these are prices, so these are dollars, and this is a percentage, so let's change that. Let's go to edit layout. Uh, let's go to data and let's see let's select this one and shift select this one and then under data formatting we can turn these things into a currency we can also click these two a's here on the formatting toolbar and align them to the right so that looks a little bit better let's align this one this percentage to the right as well and let's make this a percent let's exit our layout and let's see this is already looking a lot better in fact, I'm um, getting a little bit ahead of myself. There is one uh, thing I'd like to do first, and that's the thing that I always do that I always find really handy, and um, that is I'd like to turn this uh, layout into a table view, uh, because I always like to have one layout uh, like this for myself and another layout for the user. So let's go back to um, form view, let's edit our layout, let's create a new layout, and let's call this one lay animals. Um, standard form is correct. We're going to move all the fields except for this ID. That's the one we're going to clear because we don't want our users to have to deal with uh, this ID field. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose a nice looking theme. Um, and there you go. Okay, now what we have is two layouts. We have this one that I can now turn into a table view. And we have this lay animals that is going to be the um, uh, layout that my users are going to be using. So now I'm going to have to do this again. I'm going to align, align these to the right. I'm going to set these as currency and this profit one as a percent. All right, good. So this is looking good. We have our uh, layout here. Um, one more thing we'd like to change, actually a few more things, but let's take it one thing at a time. When we create a new um, we add a new animal, this one is a fish. If we arrive in this category field, we need to manually enter the category and that's not really handy because we might already have a bunch of animals in there, we might already have a bunch of categories. So let's change this one. Let's select this category field in layout mode and let's go to drop down list. We're gonna make a drop down list. We don't have any value list yet, so let's make a new one. Um, animal category. Whoops. Category. Isn't this correct? Wow. Okay, so we could use some custom values. We can manually make some categories, but then what if uh, there is a new sort of animal that needs a new category? Um, then we have to manually add them in our value list, and that's not really handy. That's uh, something I don't really want to do. So, uh, because I'm a little bit lazy, I'd like to uh, let my user work uh, a little bit instead of me needing to work. So I'm going to use the values from a field in the animal uh, table here, and I'm going to use the category field. Let's include all values, all right. And now when we exit our layout and we are in the fish field, when we tab into the category, yes, we can see that we have categories here, but there is only one category right now and my fish is not a bird. So let's click here and let's say fish. Okay, if we click this now, we will see that this new um, category has been added. But in fact, let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Um, and let's go to this category again and let's check this autocomplete using the value list. Let's do that because if we make a new record, we insert a picture here and we add our green monster. 
if we tab on then our cursor is immediately already in this field and we can make this uh, new category and if we add another one of those guys and then we can tab ahead and now we can see our monster there so we could select it but if our value is this really big then we don't we might not see it we can just start typing m and our monster shows up uh, file maker is telling us would you like to use monster as your category and we can just select this one um, and then go ahead so i think this is looking pretty good let's fill this stuff up a little bit and let's add some stuff and fill out our fields all right there's one thing i forgot to mention right now because i've just added um, some animals in here and some um, other things and one thing that's kind of important um let's do a little test here if i make a new record then everything is empty uh, my profit here let's say if i always want my profit to be kind of the same then i can uh, have this entered um, automatically because now if i enter a price here my sales price is going to be exactly the same as my purchase price and i don't want it and to risk uh, or to avoid uh, running the risk that I'm going to sell stuff at purchase price, I'm going to make sure that my profit is always entered automatically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File Manage uh, Database. I'm going to go to my profit here, and I'm going to enter, make an auto enter data. Let's make this 0.2. Okay, okay. So that every time I make a new record, the profit percentage here is automatically entered in now this look uh, shows you 20 percent but if i click in here this will show 0.2 if i turn this into 0.5 this will be 50 percent so you do have to pay attention when you're working with percentages so it's kind of uh, different to uh, note so but this way every time i make a new record i do happen to have uh, an, a value entered in here so that if i enter a purchase price then i have a sales price that is automatically going to be higher than my purchase price. So that's kind of important if you have these uh, kinds of values that you would like to have entered automatically. Okay, let's go and get rid of these again. And now, I have this uh, nice uh, layout, but I sometimes would like to have a little bit of an overview, um, a list, shall we say, of, um, of all my animals, so that I can see um, them all together. So let's make a list animals. And let's make it a list view. What are we going to add? We're going to add uh, the name. We might add the description. We might add a purchase price and a sales price and a description in the end. Okay, something like that. And the same theme. We need to click through all these windows here. And now I can see that I have all my animals here with a purchase price and a sales price and a description. Now I could edit this stuff a little bit because it's all a bit uh, a bit busy. Let's put these a bit a bit higher. And this description is a bit small. In fact, this whole layout is a bit small. So let's make it a bit bigger. Let's make this description like a bit so. Let's move all of these over a little bit so that I can make my name a little bit bigger. Okay, this is looking pretty good. This might be a bit too big, so let's make them a bit smaller. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ooh, this is a little small. Voila, something like so. Now I have to make my prices. I have to turn them back into value, or a currency at least, um, like so. Let's see what we've got. All right. Uh, you can see that one record looks a little bit different than if you browse through our record. The active record looks different from all the other records. If you don't like that, you go to Edit Layout, Layout Setup, and you uncheck this Delineate Fields on Current Record Only. Okay, going back to Browse Mode, now everything looks the same. Okay, one thing that's a little bit annoying is that all our annals are all just thrown together, and there's no real organization here. If you remember, we did have a um, category, so let's see if we can maybe do something interesting with this category. Let's go to Layout Part Setup and let's create a sub summary part. That gives us the ability to uh, kind of group our records by category. One thing to note is that it, this is called a sub summary when sorted by category. That's something we're going to have to remember. Uh, we want to print this one above, and if we look closely, we see that we have a new layout part that has been created. 
if we select our body and we go to position and we can see that our body has a height in inches that's not very handy so let's click the inch that will change to centimeters we click it again it'll change to points and this is a more handy kind of measurement 26 points this one is a bit narrow so let's see this is 14 let's make this a bit bigger let's create it let's make it 26 same as the body okay now what we could do is add our, because we're going to show our category in this part, we could add it as a field, but that's not going to look very good. So I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to drag a square like so. And then I'm going to go to insert, merge fields, and I'm going to enter my category in here. Let's make it bold so it's a bit bigger and let's make sure that it's somewhat in the middle of our uh, part there. In fact, let's select everything and move it a little bit over, except our category. Let's uh, hit Control B or go to Browse Mode, and then what do we have? We have absolutely nothing. But if we remember very well, this was a subsummary part when sorted by. So we're going to have to sort our records by category. And if we do that, there you go. This is um, a little bit clearer now. Now we get to see uh, all our animals sorted by their category. So I have a few birds, a few fish and some that are neither bird nor fish. Okay, this is looking pretty good right now, but I'm still stuck on this layout, and I still have to kind of manually go from the one to the other. This is not nice. Let's see if we can find a solution for that. In our layout for animals, let's make this header a little bit bigger. Let's make it 60, and let's add a text field here. Let's uh, call it list of animals. Let's put it somewhere where it looks good. Uh, maybe we can underline it and then when we right click we could create a button setup because this is a text field but this can be a button a field could be a button as well or you can use an image as a button we're going to call this one we're going to make this a go to layout and the layout is going to be list animals okay this is looking pretty good one thing i want to check in my button setup yes i want this to be changed to a hand cursor over the button okay let's exit our layout and let's um, see what this does uh, we have a list of animals here we can click this and then yes we go to our layout now what happens here when we click inside these fields you will see that these become um, selected so if i click my purple monster here and i go to my animal layout i will be in my uh, monster record if i click my bird record it becomes active if i go to my animals layout and then i will be with my bird so basically what i want here is i want to create a button that brings me back to that record on my other layout and that's actually really simple we're going to go to edit layout we're going to make a button setup that goes to layout uh, layout is lay animals okay and if we do that we will see that these are buttons, but we won't really see it. We'll see it because of the, of the hand cursor, and we will know it. And it's not really clear to our user. So let's do something that I always like to do, and I make it a bit blue, and underline it. So now it looks kind of like a hyperlink. Now if I click my penguin, it will be the active record, and I will go to his details. So basically, this is now um, a very handy way of moving back and forth between uh, my detail list and a list of all my animals and I could select one and go there. Okay, this is already uh, a nice uh, first little part. Let's see if we can add some more interesting things, shall we? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to think ahead a little bit because if I have diff uh, uh, like a, a database with different um, uh, different layouts, then what I like to always do is create a, a menu so that you can go for, you can start off at that menu and you can always go from that menu to the different layouts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a special table for this called menu, which is not absolutely necessary, but I always like to do that because then. I can do some funky things with that menu later on. Um, this one is going to have an ID, which is not absolutely necessary, but let's make one anyway. I'm going to make my date a calculation, and I'm going to make this the calculation of get current date. Calculation is going to result in a date. There you go. And then I can go to edit layout create a new layout based on not animals but based on menu I'm going to call this one menu as well and let's go to next I'm going to add no fields um, 
this theme is good, so this is what I would like. Uh, um, I'm going to make this a bit bigger, let's make it 60 as well, and then this entire uh, screen can be made a bit bigger, like something like so. Okay, now I have my menu, I'm going to add a, uh, I'm going to hit Control M or maybe insert merge field to enter a uh, merge field here. Um, this is going to be my date, so I might make it a bit bigger. I'm going to make it a bit bigger like this as well. I'm going to align it there. And I'm going to put it somewhere on the side there in the corner. There you go. Now I'm going to um, write down menu on this side so that I know where I am. This menu can be very nice and big. Maybe not so big. Mm, it's a little large. Okay. Something like this. There. Let's see, we don't see our date yet. That's because there are no records right now. But if we create a new record, then our date shows up here. Okay, now I can just quickly um, create my, uh, my menu here. Let's make this one about 120, uh, 150 high. Let's add a little text here animals so let's make this text about as wide as this thing is here like so then let's center it in the middle and let's insert a picture I have my menu here and this is a fish that I think is kind of cute let's select all of these and let's center them all okay like so and then this one here the big one in the back can become a button that goes to a layout uh, my late animals. Okay, control B, and I have a list of animals. I have my animals here. I have a menu, but I can't go back to my menu yet. I still have to do this to go back to my menu. So let's go here and let's create a menu button so that I can always go back to my menu. Let's make a button like so. I'm going to perform a script. I don't have a script yet, so let's make a new one go to menu. The reason that I'm making a script for this is because I could also just make a simple go to layout script step. The reason that I'm making a script is that if I ever want my user to go to a different kind of menu, then I can just simply change that one script and otherwise I have to go on every single layout to change um, to change that one script step. So let's make it, uh, let's put it on 24 by 24. 25 by 25. Okay, so let's copy this one. Let's check one thing first. On button setup, I want it to change to a hand cursor. Let's control copy. Let's go to our list animals and let's paste it in here. Um, we might need to make our header a little bit bigger first. And let's get these things somewhat out of the way. At least, uh, like so. Then let's paste this one, put it on. 25, 25, and let's see, this is pretty close to our name, so let's make this a bit bigger. And let's make it so that our name can be underneath our button. Okay, I can go to my menu, go to my animals, my list of animals from everywhere. Okay, I'm coming full circle right now. Okay, great. Now, our next step. Okay, if you've ever seen an invoicing uh, an invoicing database or an invoicing solution, you will uh, kind of already know the structure that we are going to create as well. So basically what this is is an invoice with an invoice number and an invoice date is linked to a certain client and you have a bunch of products on your invoice that you're selling. Um, a certain product, a certain amount, it says a price and this creates a total. Um, now this structure will give you something like so which is pretty much your basic um, invoice structure. You have a client table related to your invoice table. Your invoice table is related to a line item table, which are all, all your items that are being invoiced, or basically all your products that are being invoiced to a certain client. Now, for our sales and purchases, we're going to make something kind of like this. 
it's just the the trick is that we will try and create one line items table and we're going to use that both for our sales as for our purchases as well so we will be linking both our sales and our purchases to the same kind of line item table so let's go ahead and do that shall we let's start with a uh, file manage database and let's create a new table for our sales What do we need to make in here? It's pretty basic, uh, as always, an ID number, set to serial number, and let's make a date. That's going to be a date field. And in fact, let's not even worry about entering the correct date. Let's just make this an auto-enter auto creation date so that auto when we create a, a new sales record it automatically shows today's date because I think the ID in our pet store is going to be that people show up at the uh, counter and we just immediately um, make them a receipt or sell them a certain a certain animal so um, this is good um, sales table and basically let's go right ahead and make our um, purchases table as well because it's just going to be um, exactly the same this is not correct let's make it a table let's not, save. let's not save that last one and let's make it purchases purchases table and let's make this as well it's exactly the same as our sales ID number serial number and a date which is a date set to auto enter the creation date that is pretty nice okay now we can kind of see that this menu we don't need this one we have our purchases we have our sales and we kind of need to create our line items table and I'm gonna call mine balance because that's what it's going to do it's going to kind of uh, contain all my pluses and my minuses and we're gonna use that to make our calculation uh, of what's in stock so as always an ID field serial number okay then let's think ahead what do we need to do we need to link this balance both to our sales and to our purchases so sales ID FK and purchases ID FK and we need every sale or every purchase will be about an animal so animal ID FK where we store the ID of the animal and then what do we need we have an amount but that amount could be either sold or purchased so sold and amount purchased if we sell an animal then there will be a price attached to that but the price can change over time now if we uh, sell uh, an animal and that's also very important when you're creating invoices and that will be important with our uh, receipts here as well um, when we make a sale the sale will be for the price that is valid at that moment in time and if the price changes afterwards we do not want to see this reflected in our uh, our sales that have already been done so um, that is um, what we call a lookup. What we're going to do is when we make the sale, we will look up the current price and then save that price. And that price will then not change anymore. So let's call the price lookup. It's going to be a number. The only problem is this lookup needs to come from a related table. And our tables have not been related yet. So we can't make those settings yet right away. Let's make them in a second. Let's first see if we need any more um, uh, fields. If we have our amount sold and our price, then we can uh, come to a total sold, which will be a calculation, and that will be our amount sold multiplied by our lookup price. Okay, I think this is good for now. Let's um, go to our relationships and let's see what we can do here. Our balance can come here. Our sales can be linked to the sales ID and our purchases to the purchase ID. Our animals can be linked to the animal ID. So we can put them somewhere here. And this is looking pretty good. I think we can now uh, make our lookup price. 
and this can be a looked up value starting from the balance table uh, getting information from the animals table and it's going to get the sales price okay I think this is looking pretty good one thing we don't have yet is the um, purchase price but the purchase price will be stored in the animals table so let's keep it there and so on our balance we if we want to have a total for the um, a total purchased then we need to make our calculation so that the amount purchased is multiplied by the uh, purchase price in the animals table okay I think this is already pretty good let's see what we can do with that um, so that I don't have to recreate this menu button what I like to do is go to file manage layouts and just plain duplicate my animals layout but first I'm gonna create some order in this chaos I have a few tables I have a few layouts and I even already have a list so let's um, pull them over to the left side here I have my animals as a table lay animals is a layout list animals is a list and this menu was a table and this menu is a layout but let's just keep that one here and all the rest are all tables so that I know what I'm doing okay so I have my um, layout lay animals oh yeah what I was going to do is go to file manage layouts again and I'm going to duplicate this one because I'm going to um, make my sales lay sales um, based uh, I'm gonna start from this uh, animals layout okay I can leave all the rest as it is and then I'm gonna go to my layout lay sales I'm going, there's nothing here because all these fields are coming from the animals table and I don't need that so I'm gonna delete them all I'm gonna make this one come from the stable, uh, sales this is gonna be the date and this one can be a drop-down calendar and it can include an icon to show and hide the calendar so this list of animals is eventually going to be list of sales uh, if I ever use that um, but this button can do nothing for now okay control B we have no sales yet so let's add a new record and this automatically creates a date for me I need to change this label to date and there we go we have our first sale record but there is nothing on it yet okay how do I create um, shall I say um, items on my sales record here um, that is B is something we're going to be doing inside a portal because that's how we enter data into a related table so if you go back to file manage database then we can see we are on our sales record but we want to create some um, balance records here okay let's see if we can do that let's make a portal make it real big we're going to show related records from the balance table we're not going to sort we're not going to filter we are going to allow deletion of portal records because if we accidentally add something that we don't want we have to be able to delete it and if you have loads of stuff here then we want to uh, show a scroll bar okay now which files do I want on here I don't want the ID because I don't care the sales uh, sales ID I don't want to see that I don't want to see the purchase ID either because it has nothing to do with our sales I do want to see what animal this is about because this is, these are our sales I want to see the amount sold I want to see my price looked up and the total sold I think this is a good start uh, let's uh, see what that gives this gives us an empty white box let's go back and let's create some some um, labels so that we know what we're looking at so I've changed my fields a little bit made them a little bit smaller and let's see what we get now if you go into browse mode we get nothing yet we can't make anything here so there is something that we are missing so let's go to file manage database 
we go to our relationships when we are out on the sales uh, table here we would like to be able to create balance records so maybe there is something going on in here and if we do this we can see that we can edit this relationship and there are a few options here that we can select on the bottom let's first of all on the balance side because that's where we want to be able to create records let's allow the creation of records in this table in this balance table via this relationship and also let's delete related records in this table when a record is deleted in the other table what this means is that we delete uh, records in the balance table when a record is deleted in the sales table so if we make a sales record and we start adding a bunch of um, animals to this layout to this um, record we uh, all of a sudden want to delete this one then we also want to delete all the records that are related to this one because otherwise they will stay there as kind of orphaned records they will influence our stock and that's not going to be good so in this case i do want to delete um, balance records when I delete a sales record. In other uh, situations you might not want to do that. It depends really on the situation. For now I do want this. So I see something has changed. I can now start entering information here on my sales. So basically I have a client that shows up at my counter and he wants to buy a certain animal. But right now this is kind of annoying because I have to manually enter stuff here. This is not yet good. Let's see if we can make this a little bit better. And if you go to browse mode, we see that we have to enter the animal ID here. Um, where can we get the animal ID? Let's make a new value list and let's call it animals. Let's use values from a field and from the animals table. What we need is the ID field because the ID field is what we need to enter here. But I don't know any IDs, so what I want to do is I want to also display a value from the second field and I want to display the name and then I want to go as far as to show values only from the second field. Let's see what that does. We hit control B and we have a value list with all our animals and we can select whichever one we want and if we do that we see that the id for this animal shows up here now we can add a certain amount uh, let's add a two and then we can see that uh, the calculation here calculates the price for this particular animal now we can still see the id so that's not handy yet let's see if we can figure something out what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this field i'm going to hit control in windows and I'm going to drag this field over here. So now I get a second field, and FileMaker is asking me what I would like that field to show, and I want to show my animal name, and I made a label here, which I don't want that, so let's delete it. And now I've got my animal name and the animal ID here. So if I go to Control Browse, I can see this is the ID, and this is the name. If I select another one, then this gets updated as well but it also gives me a drop down which is not correct so there are a few settings that we need to change here first of all this name does not have to be a drop down it has to be an edit box and it should not be available in browse mode but it should be available in find mode if i find then i want to find uh, for a certain name and not for a certain id but if i enter something then i do want to enter something from this drop down list and I want to have this one in, uh, so I want to have this field in browse mode, but not in find mode. If I do that and I select them both using shift, then I can align them on top of each other. And now if I go into browse, I can see that I have the name selected. But if I select an animal here, then in fact, my ID gets entered in the ID field, but I get to see the name of the animal. So that's good. Uh, this is uh, this is progress uh, it's looking good one more thing um, or two more things first of all I don't get a total here in the bottom and I can't delete these records yet so let's um, first insert a picture here and I've got this little uh, red cross that I like to use and if I put it somewhere here in the middle of my portal row then I can make this a button that under records deletes the portal row it's important that you delete portal row use delete portal row and that you don't use delete record request if, because if you use this delete record request then you will be deleting it will be deleting a sales record and not a portal row so let's use delete portal row and if we want we can add a tooltip that says delete this item okay so i get these little crosses and i can click them and my fish goes away and i can add something else and there you go 
okay this is handy this is good let's um, add a total here if we want to have a total we go to file and manage database and we need to create a new field in our balance table we have the total per line but we still need to have the to overall total what I like to do is let's make a summary field and I always call my summary fields s underscore and I'm gonna make this s underscore sum um, total sold and this is going to be a summary field so this is going to show us that the total of total sold this may sound a little funky but if we go to edit layout we control drag this total field to the bottom and make this one sum total sold and we are going to create a label that's going to say total and let's make these two bold here and there you go let's see what that gives this gives us a total per line and then this summary gives us the total for all these records so uh, I'm not good with math but this is looking pretty good to me I think this is about correct okay not bad not bad at all I can add animals to my sales records and if I would want to make this really funky then I could have some sort of a receipt printer and have a button here that says print receipt and I could print this receipt so I can give this to my client okay good this is one side of the um, this is uh, the sales so these are the animals going out now I need to make a section for the animals that are coming in now again I'm pretty lazy and I know that my purchases are going to be practically the same as my sales so what I'm going to do is file manage uh, layouts and I'm going to duplicate my sales layout and I'm going to call it the purchases and uh, it's going to come from the purchases table okay looking good let's close this one and go to my layout purchases and then this one and I'm going to use my text this is going to be purchases and in fact what you could do if you don't want to be too confused as to on what uh, layout you are you could make a text field somewhat like so and put it on your layout so that you kind of know where you are and this one is on 8 60 by 24 and let's copy let's go to the other layer here let's paste oops that's not what I wanted to paste let's uh, boom, boom. go to purchases let's copy let's remember the position 860 by 24 let's go here let's paste and let's make this one 860 by 24 and this is going to be our sales layout so So basically now when we are in our record here we can kind of see where we are. These are the sales, these are the purchases. Alright, let's start changing this because I have a bunch of fields in here that are not correct. This comes from the sales table, which should come from the purchases table and um, this date is right. Then I need to change these fields as well. Um, this portal in the purchases um, uh, on the purchases uh, layout. This is also going to come from our balance table because um, we've got um, all our records in there, both our pluses and our minuses. But a few things that we need to change here, the amount is the amount purchased. The price is not going to be the lookup price here, but I'm going to just take from the animals table the purchase price. And then this total will not be the total sold, but the total purchased. And this sum is going to be a sum total for our, um, for our, let's go to file, manage, database. Um, we need to make, for in our balance table, we need to make a sum total purchased. And let's create that one and it's going to show us the total of total purchased. Let's try this out, see what it gives, some total purchased. Okay, let's, uh, we can't make any records here yet, so let's go to File, Manage Database. We also, from the purchases 
to the balance table have to edit our relationships and on the balance side we also want to check these two fields that we checked before now I can't make any uh, records yet because uh, there is no records here in our purchases table yet so let's make this one it automatically creates our uh, date I can enter a bird and a bird has a purchase price of 10 let's add an amount let's say that I've added 5 to my stock uh, let's see that I've add, added a few fish as well and a few monsters etc etc these are um, now my purchases and I have my sales so now that we have those two values we can start and calculate the amount of animals we have in stock I've just gone ahead and added my sales and my purchases buttons to my menu so that I can go from my menu to all of my different um, areas of my database and there's one thing that you should do go to file options and switch to layout menu if you want your menu to show up every time you open your file okay so we have sold stuff we have purchased some stuff um, let's now uh, add this um, this actual amount in stock to our layout shall we let's make this one a little bit bigger and let's um, see what kind of calculation we're going to use for this so let's go to file manage database what we're going to do in our animals field let's create a calculation for in stock uh, that's going to be a calculation and what we need for this actually we need some stuff from the balance table and I think um, this is not entirely going to work yet let's do okay for now because first what we need to do is go to our balance table and we need to create something extra because we have our amount sold and our amount purchased but this is basically for every record separately we need to create a summary for this let's create s underscore sum underscore amount sold this needs to be a summary that shows me the total of amount sold and then I want the S, the S sum of the amount purchased, which is also going to be the summary, and is going to show me the total of amount purchased. Okay, so I need those summaries in order to be able to make my calculation, and my calculation is then going to be the uh, from the balance table the total sum of the amount purchased minus the total sum of the amount sold okay let's do this let's go to edit layout let's add a new field here let's call this one from the animals table in stock let's create a label Oops. And there you go and let's see what this gives this gives us a stock of in five for our bird. And let's scroll through here. I have minus two tokens, which is a kind of a strange value. I have five fish, etc., etc. I don't have values for everyone, um, but let's see if we can make this a little bit clearer. Let's see if we can um, find out if these values are correct. Let's go to to browse to uh, layout mode and let's create a little portal here let's show records from balance yes let's show a scroll bar and let's think about which which fields we would like um, we would like to see the amount sold the amount purchased uh, then we could add the price for the sales and in the animals table the price of the purchase then from the balance table, what else do we need? Total sold and total purchased. Okay, let's see what that gives. If you go here, we see just a bunch of text. But nothing much. Let's go to our purchases. Let's make a new purchase here. Let's add some of everything let's just add a few things here there let's see if this changes anything okay we've got some more values going on now and our in stock number has changed a little bit let's just quickly go ahead and add our labels here 
All right, I've gone ahead and added a few labels on the top here, and I've made my um, uh, my currencies and my amounts show up here. So now I can kind of see what's going on. So basically, I have seven of these little birds in stock. I have purchased five, and I have purchased two, so that means seven. If I go to my next record here, my token, I have minus two in stock because I have sold two, but I've never purchased any which is of course incorrect um, and not possible, but that just means that we haven't entered our data correctly yet. Um, but for the rest, this is looking pretty good. Um, this is working. Um, I've got six fishes here because I've purchased five plus one. So this is showing me what I have in stock. Okay, good, good this far. Um, let's add a little something because this was pretty easy. Let's add a reorder amount. Um, at some point my fishes will uh, start selling and the stock will go down and I would like to order fishes uh, before they are all gone because I don't want to be without fish. Let's go to file manage database and in our animals table let's just add a reorder. Reorder amount. This can be a number. Uh, very simple. Let's go to edit layout and in, in fact, let's go ahead and click this one. Let's copy this one Let's double click this one make it reorder amount and let's change the label to reorder amount And we might have to move this over a bit more. Okay Let's see now. Let's say that I would like my reorder amount to be five and let's say that I would like it to be five with all of my fishes, uh, all of my animals. If I, for instance, do something like I just did right now and create a new field, I can, um, like we did before, go to File, Manage, Database and make my reorder amount a automatic uh, enter of five. And okay, so now every new uh, record I make will have five in there, but all the records that exist already, they have nothing in there. If I have a bunch of animals and I have to manually enter a value in every single one of them, that's kind of annoying. So what I can do, and actually I'm going to go ahead and go to my own uh, developer layout here, and I'm going to go click modify, and I'm going to add this reorder amount. As we can see, this is empty now, except for this one. If I want to add a value to all of them together at the same time, I can go to records and I can go to replace field contents. This will permanently replace the contents of the field reorder amount in the eight records of the current found set. And I want to replace with a calculated value and I want to be uh, replacing this with the value five. I have to put this value between brackets because if I, if I would not put it between brackets, it would be looking for, uh, FileMaker would be looking for a field that has the f name 5. So text goes in between brackets or a number goes in between brackets. If I replace this one, then I can see my, my reorder amount has become 5 for each and every single one of my animals. So that's good. Let's go to our animal layout. Okay, now we have minus 2 in stock and our reorder amount is 5. Um, so basically when I only have five penguins left, I should start reordering. Okay, this is good But we can do this better. In fact, let's uh, go here Let's uh, take our description there and let's move it over a little bit and then let's add a field Let's drag this one over here Let's let it go. This is going to be our in stock I'm not going to create a label because I'm going to get my label from here and control click it so that I can get it over here. This will be in stock. Uh, okay, this is good. Maybe a bit big. Let's align them like so. And then let's move them over to the side. Okay, good. I can copy this whole thing. Control drag. And I can make this one reorder amount okay this is a bit small all right something like this okay this one is still pointing to the wrong field so let's do this reorder amount Okay, 
let's hit control B and now I can see that I have um, them really aligned so let's do this okay I have my in stock value here these are how many of them I have I have not yet sold or bought any starfish apparently so I have zero and these are my reorder amounts basically some of them need to be reorders and reordered and some of them don't my birds I have seven in stock and I want to reorder when I only have five in stock so this is looking pretty good but I need some way to highlight these values I need to highlight um, there where there is a problem so let's go ahead and go to edit layout and what I can use in this case is conditional formatting and I'm going to use it on the in stock field I'm going to add a conditional formatting line and this is going to be a formula formula if I hit specify then I can delete all of this and I can think a bit about what my formula needs to be basically I would like to see something highlighted uh, when my uh, in stock value is smaller than or equal than my reorder amount uh, I think that's about it let's see what we want to happen then is a fill color of red and let's see if this does what it needs to do I have a few red ones now my token is obviously minus two and it should be five um, this is obviously one that needs to be ordered immediately I have uh, not enough sharks I don't have any starfish etc etc so this is looking pretty good we can actually go back to our token here edit layout and we can do the same thing here we can make conditional formatting for um, the same thing as we just did specify when our in stock value is smaller than or equal to our reorder amount I would like this to have a fill color of red and it's doing the same thing here as it's doing on my overview list okay so this is good now if you have a huge long list then you need to scroll through this and sometimes it might be handy if you can um, see only the animals that need to be reordered so let's see if we can find a way to do that now it would be handy if we would just have a, a button here that says show me all the um, animals that need to be reordered um, and basically um, we can do that the only little uh, trick here is that that is a, a bit of a funky thing to do uh, basically what we would want to do is we would like to see if this in stock amount is smaller than our reorder amount then we would like to see those records now we can't do that as a find but we can use a little trick what we're going to do is we're going to create a new field a calculation field that uh, gets a certain value if the in stock value is smaller than the reorder amount and then we can perform a find for a uh, value in that field sounds a little, a little bit crazy but let's just go to file manage database and then we can figure out how this works what we're gonna do is create a calculation field called C um, uh, re reorder mm -hmm. are we gonna call it like this yeah let's call it C reorder uh, it's going to be a calculation field and what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement it's probably new for you guys so let's go here we hit I so we arrive at if we can double click this one and then we get kind of an example of what the um, of what the makeup of this if statement is if my um, in stock amount is smaller than my reorder amount then I would like to see one result otherwise I would like to see another result very simple very basic so our test will be if our in stock amount is smaller than or equal to our reorder amount then I would like to see a result and the result is going to be a text that says reorder and if you remember correctly a text needs to be between brackets and if this is not the case I don't want anything so I'm going to just put two brackets and that's it this is going to result in a text and I hope that I didn't make a mistake let's see if this is working let's go to edit layout let's drag a field down here the field is going to be calculation reorder without a label 
let's see what this shows us it shows us a value reorder if the uh, in stock value is lower than the reorder amount so basically it's telling me that I need to reorder this one this one this one but not the other ones so this is pretty good what we can do now is we can do a find for reorder and then if we perform this find we will see only our um, uh, records that need to be reordered if you are paying attention you can see that we have lost something here we have lost our uh, sub summary and if you remember we needed to sort in order to have a sub summary so if we sort again then we can now see all our animals that need to be reordered are um, are found right now now what we can do is make this a little bit easier because these are quite a few steps that I have to take and I don't want this field visible. So what we can do is we can pour uh, all these actions into a very simple script. Let's make a script, file manage script, and let's make a new one. Um, let's call this one find um, animals that need to be poured. Okay, if you remember exactly what we did, what we did first was we went into find mode. So enter find mode and you have a pause here. We don't want it to pause there because uh, we want it to just go on. Uh, we went into find mode and then we searched for reorder. So the second one is going to be set field. The target field will be our C reorder field, that's this one. And we are going to enter a value there. And the value we're going to enter there is if we look closely it's reorder and put this between brackets because it's a value a text value that we are entering there so we're going to enter find mode we're going to set this field to reorder and then we're going to perform our find and if you remember we also have to sort our records we can perform this without a dialogue because we're going to specify the sort orders right here and because we just did a sort and we're still on this layout FileMaker is already suggesting me a sort that I kind of like so let's go and hit Control S to save this let's close this one and if we for instance do show all here then we see all our records again and then we can try out our script let's hit this green uh, play button here and it does exactly what it needs to do it shows me all the animals that need to be reordered so this is brilliant what we can do now is remove this field again because we don't really need it there and what we need now is another script that kind of fixes uh, that shows me all my animals again because if I just do show all then they are not sorted because then I have to do show all and sort and sort and those are like three steps that I don't want to do let's make a show all animals script so if you remember correctly in found sets we can do um, show all records and then we do have to do that sort because that's kind of important we're going to perform this without a dialogue and we're going to specify the sort order so let's control save and now we have our other script that shows all the animals which we already kind of had and let's show all the to be reordered ones okay looking good uh, working well and now we need to make this just a little bit simpler so let's go to edit layout um, let's make a button here let's make this one perform a script and let's make this one find animals that need to be ordered how can I put this as a text um, to be ordered there you go and let's copy this one over here let's go to button setup let's perform the other script show all animals and if you want to uh, change this text you can't double click because then you get into the button setup so you have to take your text tool go over here and let's say show all this one doesn't need to be that big so let's see what this does uh, one thing that annoys me is these buttons don't have a hand cursor so let's go to button setup change to hand cursor I like that hand cursor okay control B to be ordered these and show all all of them alright this is brilliant now let's say for instance our starfish here he uh, is not even he hasn't even been sold so let's go to menu purchase 
uh, our starfish here and let's purchase 10 of them so let's go back and see if something has changed in our list of animals yes our starfish is now 10 of them in stock and he does not need to be ordered so i've got four of these here and i can show all again okay looking brilliant let's see if we can add something else well because this all went very smooth and very easy um, I've gone ahead and added some uh, purchases and some sales and let's see if we can make a very kind of quick and simple little um, report it's, uh, somewhat of an overview so let's go to edit layout let's make a new layout let's base our layout on the balance table and let's call this one list report let's make it a list view and let's go ahead and add some fields what would i like to see i'd like to see what animal we we're talking about um, the amount sold the amount purchased the price of the sale and the price of purchase and what else do i like the total sold and the total purchased uh, looking good I think we're gonna start with that for now um, I don't need anything here this theme is good let's finish this okay what do we get is something that looks really kind of boring this is not good let's go to edit layout and let's see the first of all I don't need to see the animal ID I would like to see the animal name okay this is looking a little bit better already um, what else would I like to change um, well, I have a bunch of prices here, and I have a couple of totals here. I can change their formatting. That might already uh, change it a little bit. Okay, we can see a bunch of items that have been sold, a bunch of items that have been purchased here, and I can see a whole bunch of totals. But this is kind of uh, not really ideal yet. Uh, I need to be able to group this somehow. Uh, maybe I want to group by date by month maybe by month would be nice okay let's see we are if we go to edit layout we're getting all our uh, items from the balance table let's see if we can get the month name in there somehow and if we go to file manage database then we will see that our balance records are all here but the dates are in the sales and in the purchases table how do I get the correct date to be in my balance table um, might be a little tricky let's see if we can come up with something interesting let's create a calculation um, date um, let's say month name because essentially what we would like to happen it's again something we've done before it's an if statement if this is a sale then I want to get the month name from the sales database and if this is a purchase then I want to get the date from the purchase um, table so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another if statement if and basically what I have here is I have my amount sold and amount purchased I'm going to use those and I'm going to say if is empty amount sold so if it is a uh, purchase, then my result one will be month name, month name for the purchase, so purchases date. You can also find that month name here. If you hit M and you search a little bit, you will find month name date. You can create a month name of a specific date. Um, so if uh, the amount sold is empty, it will be a the purchase so otherwise if it's not empty then I will have the month name for my sale sales date sales date um, is this good this needs to be a text um, let's see if this works let's go into our table here this is why our um, our uh, table view is so handy let's modify and add this new field I just made month name and look it worked um, for these um, all these records that I made um, 
all the uh, month names are showing up nicely this is looking pretty good let's go back to our list report here and let's add some grouping here let's go to edit layout and we're gonna do what we've done before let's add a part a new part a sub summary when sorted by month name uh, print above we're going to create this uh, make this a bit bigger position 26 not 59 26 let's make a text field that shows up in here and this text is going to be to control M or insert merge field uh, this is going to be a month name from the balance table okay looking good let's make sure it's nicely in the middle there we can make this a bit bigger if we go here we see that it is not there but we all do remember that we have to sort by from the balance table by our month name and then we get our um, for April for February we get all our values this is looking a little bit better something that I'm missing here is totals now I have this sub summary part what I can put in this part is summary fields so let's see if we can do that uh, we have our amounts sold and amount purchased we have our total sold and total purchased let's uh, use shift to con to select them all and then let's uh, shift to drag them up or control drag them up to copy them and then um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and create this amount sold into a summary because we need to put summary fields in this sub summary part this is not going to be amount sold but as summary amount sold as summary amount purchased and these totals will be not total sold but some total sold and some total purchased let's see what this does let's go to edit layout and I can see something here but I can see something here let's go to edit layout 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 setup let's not delineate these fields okay and now I can see them all so basically from my month of April I'm getting totals here for the amount sold and the amount purchased and I'm getting total totals here in the values as well but this is not really handy yet because it's just giving me a total of everything let's go to edit layout and let's see if we can change that let's go to part setup and let's create another sub summary but now when sorted by animal ID FK let's print this one above and we are done let's make this one a bit bigger as well again 26 and let's create another text field let's make it like a bit big let's do insert merge field and let's go to the animals table and let's choose the animal name let's make this one bold as well this one is a bit too big let's let it go down and now I've got my animal name let's see what we've got here again these things show don't show up but as we all know and we have learned we need to go and sort these properly animal ID FK let's sort this and what do we get now aha uh -huh. this is looking a little bit better let's um, see if we can do this for our animals as well so let's go to edit layout let's select all these guys let's control drag them down okay let's see what this gives okay this gives us totals um, per animal which is good I've got in April my total amount sold and I've got this um, kind of split up by by uh, our animals here our birds our fish our green monsters um, these names are not showing up correctly so let's make this layout a little bit bigger let's select all of these except for these two and actually this one and let's make this a little bit more so okay now in fact if we go and have a look what we see is we might not even need those yellow ones here we might just be able to throw them away so let's select this body part let's delete it and let's go back and see what we've got now now we have a nice look an overview here let's create uh, let's make this one go bold so that it stands out a little bit and well right now we've got 
our report per month and per per animal we've got some sort of total for the amount that we have purchased the amount that has been sold i can see that my labels haven't moved up yet properly i should have moved them like so something like this uh, these are gone now so this gives us some sort of a report um, that shows us per month uh, how many we have sold and how many we have purchased uh, per animal. So as you can see here, you don't even need to have a body part. You can just make a report using only sub-summary parts, and this can be handy in some um, circumstances. Now, this might not be the best report ever, but I think it was a nice exercise. Now, all of this is really good and nice. Um, I've got my in-stock amount because I've sold a few and I've purchased a few. But um, as the person in the original post said, sometimes you're going to go into your store and you're going to do a count. And you're going to see that that count is not, um, is not the same as what you have here. Maybe some of these monsters have, um, have uh, snuck out, have escaped, or have gone to that uh, big farm in the sky. So maybe sometimes you need to do some sort of a correction. Now, how could we do this? And how could we do this in a um, kind of a handy way? So let's say that you've done a count and you see that you have, you should have one in stock here, but you happen to have two or zero. There's a different amount. So let's see if we can come up with a quick and simple solution. Let's go to File Manage Database. Let's start by adding a field here. Let's call it Correction. It's going to be a number field. Okay, that's good. Let's add this number field to our layout here. In fact, we can just go ahead and copy this one. I'm going to call this one, I'm going to double click, this one's going to be correction, and I'm going to call this one correction as well. Okay, basically we could uh, go and count, and then we can say, oh, we happen to have two in our um, store and not one. Now, we need to make this correction, we need to add a line here that says, um, for instance, we have one extra or one less. Um, how can we do this? Um, very simply, uh, we could make a script. And I think what's very important is if we're going to start adding lines here, we need to somehow mark these lines as being a correction. Uh, that this is a correction, that not an actual sale or not an actual per, uh, purchase. So let's um, create a new field in our balance table as well. And let's make, uh, let's call it... Um, let's say note, this can be a text field, and um, that's good. We might um, also want to note the date of a correction, so let's uh, make a date field as well. And in fact, let's make that date field a auto enter creation date, just to make it easy on ourselves. Okay, so we have a correction here that needs to be corrected here. Um, we want to uh, have this happen automatically, so let's go and figure out if oops, we can make a script that does this for us. Let's make a new script and let's make it, let's um, set correction. So basically what we want is one of two things to happen. When our correction is higher than the amount that we have here so that means if in our store we have more animals than we should have we need to make a correction um, on this side and if we have less than we should have um, then we need to make a correction here so um, I guess some of you can already smell an if statement coming so let's see what we need um, First of all, um, let's start by making a bit of a safety. I always like to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a button here that says set correction or something like that. So first we need to make a safety check to see if someone actually put a value in our field here. Let's make an if statement and let's say if if is empty. Um, our correction field then what we want is a beep and it's just a custom dialog that says whoops you need to 
enter a correction first. Let's make this just an OK button and not a cancel button. OK, and then when that happens, we need to halt our script. Let's save this, let's close this, let's go to edit layout, let's create a text field here that says set correction and let's uh, close this for now let's line it up nicely like so let's make sure that everybody knows it's a button and let's set that button set up to perform a script that is set correction okay let's see we have our button here and let's say that this field is empty then when we click set correction it's going to say whoops you need to enter a correction first okay that part of the script is already working pretty cool let's continue um, and let's think a little bit about what else we need to do okay if we have entered a value there then we can can um, think a little bit about what we need to do okay if the correction is larger than our in stock amount then what we need to do so if our correction here that's the value that we have counted in our store if this correction is 2 which is larger than then that means we need to create a record here that has the value of 1 in uh, the amount sold. No, in the amount purchased because we need to add one here. So, okay, this is a bit tricky, so it will probably require some testing anyway. So let's just go ahead and see what we get. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our other layout. Um, the balance layout and then we're going to create a new record there new record requests um, and then we're going to set some values what we need to get there to be able to link this balance record to our animal is we need to set our animal ID but we don't know our animal ID because we have gone from our animal layout to our balance layout so what we need to do is before we do that we need to remember our animal ID now we need to remember that one for this case or for the other case so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here and I'm going to set a variable now variable is maybe something a little bit funky to understand but it's basically it's really simple it's basically like remembering a value for a while or um, writing it down on a piece of paper if you will set a variable we're going to um, remember the ID of our animal and we are going to give this variable a name so that we can then use it again later it sounds a bit strange but bear with me it's kind of simple uh, what we want to remember is our animal ID and we're going to give this one a name, this variable, and it's going to be animal ID. Now, if we go out of this one, we will see that we automatically get a dollar sign in front of our name. And a dollar sign means that, uh, that shows you that this is the name of a variable. A variable is that always has a dollar in front of the name. Now, this value variable is an, an, uh, basically a value that we are remembering. And we're going to remember that one from when we set it all the way to the end of the script. If you ever need to remember a variable uh, until after a script is ended, you can just add another dollar sign like this, and then this be uh, variable becomes a global variable that's remembered uh, even after your script is done. But we don't need that now. We're going to keep this very simple. Animal ID is the name, and we're going to remember our uh, ID of our animal. So now that we have got this variable saved when we are still in our animal uh, um, uh, table, when we go to our uh, balance table, we can uh, set this variable as a field. So we go to set animal IDFK in the balance um, table, and we're going to specify uh, this to be the dollar um, animal ID. 
which is the name of our variable. So here we are setting a variable called dollar sign animal ID with the value of animals ID, and then we're going to set that variable animal ID in the balance table in the animal IDFK field. It might sound a little funky, but you will see this uh, work in a second, and then you will see how it does make sense. So let's see, what have we done? Um, because also another important thing, because we're going to go to another layout that's going to make our screen flash a little bit. Uh, we don't want to see that, so let's create a... We're going to go to Windows, let's create a freeze window, and let's put that freeze window right on the top here. So we're going to freeze the window, then we're going to do some checking. We're going to set a variable, go to another layout, and we won't see any of that because um, our window will be frozen. So, if our animal's correction is larger than our animal's in stock, we're going to go to this balance layout, we're going to make a new record, we're going to set this field, and then we have to set another field as well. We have to create, um, we have to make sure that we uh, make our uh, new in stock price uh, match up. So, what we need to do for that, if we've counted in our store and we actually have two of those little monsters and this one says that we have one, then we have to add one. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set another variable right here. B -b variable right here. And I'm going to call this one amount. Again, the dollar sign appears automatically, and this amount is going to be, if our correction is larger than our uh, in stock, this one is going to be the correction minus my in stock. So basically, it's going to be, if this is 2 and this one says 1, it's going to be 2 minus 1 is 1. Then I'm going to have to set another field. Let's control C, control V, copy and paste this one. I want to set my, um, in this case, is it going to be amount sold or amount purchased? I thought that we had said it was going to be purchased. And this one is going to be not the animal ID, but the amount. Okay, our variable amount will be set here. Um, so basically, if um, this one has two in it and this one is one, then basically I need to add one so purchased yes okay I think this is gonna be good um, all right then let's add the others case um, if the correction is smaller than the animals in stock um, let's add an else if let's go to this one and let's copy this let's paste it and let's turn it around uh, basically I would want for this to go away. One of our animals in stock is larger than the correction. Because here the correction is larger than the in stock, here the in stock is larger than the correction. Let's copy all of those and let's start adjusting them. Set variable amount is going to be um, our stock minus correction. Okay. Then we're going to go to our layout balance. We're going to make a new record. We're going to set the animal ID. If, um, uh, variable that we created in the beginning and we're going to set the amount sold not the amount purchased with our variable of amount then when all of that is done we will still be in our uh, balance layout so we want to go back to our original layout and I think maybe we want to make a little beep to let our user know that it's uh, done let's save this one and let's see oh yeah one more thing we should probably do um, because we're making a new record here, this is a correction that we're doing, this is not an actual sale or not an actual purchase, so we should probably file manage database, let's see if I already made a field for that, we should probably set some sort of a field, like I made here the note field, we should set that note field to, um, to show that this is actually a correction that we've made. So here, about there, let's make another set field, Let's 
um, say that in our balance table we want to set the note to say um, correction or let's say stock correction okay and we might want to copy this one to set the date as well we're going to set the date to be um, get current date i think i need to make it like this get current date let's see if this works um, okay um let's give it a try right we have gone into our store we see that there is one in stock uh, but we are counting and we are actually counting two in reality so let's set this correction and we see something showing up here and our stock has been corrected to now reflect that we actually do have two there let's go to edit layout so let's make this one a little bit bigger and let's add another field and we're going to add our note field from the balance table and that will show us that that this one is a stock correction this is not an actual sale not an actual purchase but it's like a correction that i've done after i've done my count so we can see that there was uh, at some point something that has gone wrong Let's try something else because this correction was now more than what we had here. Let's see that e, I've counted 20. I should have 20 penguins, but when I go and count them, I'm only counting 18 penguins. Let's set this correction. What happens here at the bottom? A stock correction shows up. It says that I have two um, uh, sold to correct. Uh, now I have 18 in stock like I actually have in reality. And this is a stock correction now giving me the correct amount. Um, one thing then to keep in mind is that in your report here you are going to want to exclude all those um, records that um, have stock corrections because those are not actual sales and not actual um, purchases so what you would want to do is a create a little script that's called exclude stock corrections and let's say that I want to perform find because basically what I want is to exclude all the ones that have a value in that notes field because the ones that are a stock correction have a value in there I want to enter find mode I do not want to pause I want to set a field and in my balance I want to set my note field to Um, to be empty um, this is a find um, parameter for finding an empty field uh, then I want to perform find okay let's save this one and see what it does I have 31 records here now so let's um, run this one This is giving me uh, 29 records found, but I do have to uh, remember to do my sort. And see, I have two records um, actually that have been excluded right now. Let's go to this one and let's add my sort. Sort records, perform without dialog, and specify this is okay. So basically, now my two, if I go to my balance table, my two um, corrections let's add this note here my two corrections are not showing up right now basically I'm, I'm looking at 29 out of 31 if I show all then my two stock corrections show up again so if I go to my report um, then I'm basically seeing everything and when I run my script here exclude stock corrections then I've got a slightly smaller uh, set here because this is excluding those 
records that I don't want to show up in my sales report. Uh, now this script can be set up to, to run when you open uh, the layout here. So let's quickly do that so you know what, how that is done. You go to layouts, layout setup, you go to script triggers and you do an on record load or maybe even an on layout enter where you exclude the stock correction. So basically if you do this if you show all and you sort to show all your records, you will have 31 records showing. If you go to your menu and back to your list report, you will automatically get your found set of 29 records because we are automatically running that script to exclude my stock corrections from my sales report. Okay, maybe a little funky and a little complicated, but in fact, it uh, shouldn't be so hard. Um, I think this um, is a nice way of doing this. There are, of course, other ways of doing this, but, um, well, this is a very simple and easy way to go about. If you guys have any questions, make sure to let me know. I'm, I'm kind of running out of things to do with this file. I think this is pretty nice already, so if there is anything else you guys would like to know or uh, find out about, just uh, let me know in the comments down below. Ciao!